it is time. I'm looking at it, I'm not sure if you guys saw it. So, one of the most popular CPU coolers of all time, the Cooler Master Hyper 212 Evo, has been recommended by millions of people. I've used it before, not a whole heck of a lot, believe it or not. I used it on a, probably one of my first builds back in like 2012, and a couple choice builds throughout you know time, but I, I can't say that's the most common CPU cooler I've used. I've used a pretty big mix uh, across the board, but today is the day we have it in hand. It does support just about every single socket you can think out there. Uh, I actually have to take apart um, the last one because I just shot it about 15 minutes ago, and then we could do the unboxing review. So come on for the ride, and let's see what's in this box. Okay. Anyway, so here's the Hyper 212 Evo. It does not fit most cases. Well, it does now, but it, the main reason why is its height is 158 and a half millimeters. But let's go ahead and get her open, see what's in it, which I mean, really shouldn't surprise anybody. There's a fan, a heat sink, and mounting hardware. Shocker. So this is where all the mounting hardware is. Do not eat, and I'm actually gonna set that aside. And then, oh, here she is in all of her glory. Note that on the back of it, back of where that came off is the back plate. That is gonna be needed for both platforms here. And quickly, since I kind of stole the thunder away from the last one, I'll show you a little bit about this one. So here is the famous mounting they use. Uh, not entirely sure what these are used for. These are, these are metal, so we'll find out that. Uh, additional clips for another fan. And then all the mounting hardware you're gonna need. I like how they do this, it's a lot cleaner. Thermal paste we used a couple times. These are pads for the fan for anti-vibration. And we'll see what we're gonna, oh, even screws for another fan. So let's go ahead and get started on, I have back here an Intel board. So I'll be the first one to tell you, I am not a fan of the Hyper 212 Evo mounting. It's still the same, but anyway. So what we're gonna need first is this guy right here. We're gonna need the corresponding nut. And what happens is, is we're going to, essentially we're gonna lift the board up so these nuts or the top pieces go through. And what's gonna have to happen is the board, or the, here I'll actually do this from an angle so you guys can see a little bit. That actually helps me out for the most part, is going to line up with these. Now, ultimately you're probably only gonna be able to do as you're finding out very quickly, we're gonna do one at a time. So what we'll do is we'll get this one all the way through, just like that. We'll pull this down a little bit here, and I'm simply going to start threading the nut on it. Want to get all the way down with your hand if possible. Not all the way down to the point where it doesn't want to move because if you have to make any adjustments and you have to unthread it. And then I'm actually going to go on the other side of the board and see where this lines up here. Okay, so that one is all the way through. Get this not going for you. This has not really changed from the previous mounting Cooler Master has done with the Hyper 212. It's not bad, it's just clearly, it's just not as easy as what we've seen with some of the other setups. Although having done as many of these as I have, I kinda know some easy shortcuts, such as putting the board on its side. Just make sure you're careful, you don't wanna damage anything or drop the board. Um, the chances of actually doing damage if the board falls over is pretty low, but Anything is possible. And then this has that giant nut piece like the last one. But what we're gonna wanna do is do it on the bottom instead of the top this time. And you wanna make sure that is indeed in place. And it pretty much has a hard stop, so don't try to over twist it. Now, this cooler is gonna mount identical to 
the previous one at this point, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove the fan and there's a couple ways to do that. What I'm just gonna do is I'm gonna take a screwdriver as gently as possible and try to lift. Oh, that came out with it. Uh, you may end up bending a fin here or there. You can either bend it back or not be super worried about it. <laughs> um, I've bending fins again, not the biggest deal, um, but just be careful. Take off the piece at the bottom. Before we mount, what we're gonna wanna do is make sure this fits. I'm gonna move up the camera and then tilt us down so you guys can see what I'm doing a little bit better. I'm going to turn this so you guys can see. Voila, so we know how that's gonna wanna go. We're going to then collapse this down a little bit like this so we can put this through. Bring it back out one more notch like we had it before. Now I'm, I'm noticing there's gonna be quite a bit of a tension on this one. And simple I have to do, I already have them started, but you pretty much twist till they're all the way down. Do you note, know, it actually took a lot of force in the middle on this particular one, so just be cognizant of what you're doing. Just keep that in mind. And then in this case, since the fan will reach, I'll just slap this fan on just like this. And then no RGB involved, but voila. Well, for AMD, we're removing a stock mounting again. I'm feeling with the Gamax 400, we're gonna leave it on. So, Guess you guys probably won't get tired of me seeing or seeing me do this here, or will get tired of me see, of doing it rather. Okay. So luckily, the stock mounting is easy to come off, just like that. And if I had to take a guess, it's going to go on the same way, except this is probably flipped upside down. And let's see if I'm right about that. looks to be the case so I will thread this through let's say it's probably this one it looks to be all the outer ones so very similar to the MP 400 or the MA 410 P rather where it's the same overall mounting, just flipped pretty much. So let's go ahead and slide this up. Hopefully you guys can see pretty decently here. Oh, there we go. So now that should be enough to hold the back plate. And the motherboard can stand for about a half a second on its own before it falls, so. As I drop that. There we go. And one more to go. So it looks like pretty much, like I said, it's gonna be just like Intel. The only downside, the only pain part is the actual mounting the cooler itself took a lot of pressure. And if I remember correctly, it was like that the last time I did it too. I'm not necessarily a big fan. Uh, let's try to do like this with a screwdriver. Well, it looks like my hand adjustment is pretty much good, but it's still added about a, an eighth of a turn, so it's fine. Now, to figure out where these need to line up. So in this case, they basically moved over from the kind of corner to the side. 
So we're gonna put this there. The slide is still up so you guys can see. So it looks like it's just gonna be like the Intel where it's gonna take a lot more pressure than I particularly like, but so be it. That's why it's important to just get these started just because the amount of pressure the mounting actually seems to be taking with this particular. Order here. So I'm just going to tighten it down halfway just because I want to make it easy to get off. But there is pretty much a hard stop, so you don't have to worry about that. And just like before, we're going to plug in to the fan header here first. Make sure it reaches over the top, which it does. Not by a lot, but it does. And in this case, we're actually going to remove the front ram slot. I talked about doing that earlier. That does for some, in some heat sinks makes sense. So we'll do that and then we'll go ahead and fire this guy right back in. Hey, you guys just saw free RAM installation as well. So there you go. She's installed, the famous Hyper 212 Evo. So thank you guys for tuning in to this unboxing overview and installation of the Kohler Master Hyper 212 Evo on both AM4 and LGA 1150X. So hopefully you guys, you found this video informational and useful. If you did like it, hit that like button. Hit the dislike button if you didn't like it. Consider subscribing or buying this from Amazon with my affiliate code below. It does help me out a little bit, but hey, every little bit definitely helps. Um, and next is the um, Deep Cool Gamax 400. So I've already done a video on that and like, but I want to do a video kind of like this. So thank you guys for tuning in. This is Steve from PC Budget Solutions and I'll see you later on down the road.